yeah. and go there first early in the day, probably when it's like quieter, you know. This video was supposed to be starting. about the days after, though. Yeah, oh, we're, so talking, we're, we're talking. We're yeah. talking. We're way off. The on this morning one. after. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What happens after you go to the show? Well, it, you know, you got to start with you know that part. Of well, the all right, so since everybody is going to Can Jam this weekend, everybody yes, is going, right? everybody. Everybody. Everyone Listen, I know is going to We're going to be, be there. They're going to be there. Yeah. Everyone you can imagine. In New York City. Tomorrow. Yeah. Times Square tomorrow. Saturday, Sunday. Yeah. Can Jam. Yeah. Well, we want, one thing I wanted to, uh, that we were thinking about is like, you know, because we've gone to trade shows forever in, in audio. And, and, you know, like you guys just did the car show recently locally, right? Yes, and I've closed doors clo at car shows. Yes. That's yeah, right. Yeah. That's There's the a video on that, isn't there? Where? There is. There, yeah, we'll yeah. Put like closing the door. Maybe. Yeah, closing the door for to tell to the quality. To evaluate the vehicle, yeah. Yeah, you get the resonant character of the whole body of the car. That's right. And mm. if you want to level it up, yeah. roll down the window. And yeah. it, it, it's like nice. way harder to... Past. Well, we'll get into time. this later. We better stick to the oh, oh, yeah, But yeah, yeah. But but you know, you go. You, let's say you go to you go to one of these shows, right? And you go in with some sort of preconceived notions, whatever they might be. Mm -hmm. And I'll bet any money that it's there's no exception that when you are done with the show, that there are things that you like or dislike, right? That you didn't think you liked or disliked before you got there. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it's inevitable. It's a complete mind changer sometimes when you go to a show. You know, it could be anything. Yeah, you know, if you actually have an open mind, that is. Well, that's true. Plenty of people go to shows and it just reaffirms what they already knew, because that's sort of what they were looking for. Which is fine. Yeah, it's functional. I guess it's if not that's really what you the like. better bet. Yeah, like if you're a you know a BMW fan, you're mm. you're gonna drive BMWs, right? You do see that at car shows, yeah. You're just looking for the latest and greatest. You don't care. Yeah. You're not even looking at other things. You're not gonna go to the Chevys, the Fords, mm. Chryslers. The, Jeeps. Well, it depends on what you're looking for, sure. Huh? But and not even a Mercedes. Like <laughs> but doing that, you won't be surprised. Oh, I'm not, I would never even consider this, right? Yeah, true. But that's yeah. Sometimes it's nice. Go look at the Kia. Yeah. Slam the door on that. Yeah. yeah. They got Mitsubishi still. That's true. Still sell them. Well, There's like right. one. <laughs> that's kind of the beauty of an audio show, you know, because you might be in a certain price category or whatever. You're you're, you're never going to spend more than you know how people right. are oh, like. Yeah, yeah. I'm never going to spend more than X dollars on something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. until you try it <laughs> and you're like oh now all of a sudden oh now i see why people like this you know well it goes um, both ways right yeah. some people true. also say it's definitely not worth it to me true so it it's a valuable experience either yeah. way right yeah or it could work the other way because like you could try something you wouldn't even consider that's like cheap that you would think and you're like oh actually this fits my need right right actually sure. that's the best case scenario yeah. you go there expecting to spend a ton of money right and you're like i'm good with this that's right yeah. Sometimes that happens. That would be cool. I've, I've had that happen before. It, it can happen. But anyways, the topic of today's discussion is supposed to be, what are the reasons you could walk away from the show and think you like a thing, but end up not being satisfied with it long term? How could your opinions and feelings change over time? Yeah, it could go either way, actually. You could like or dislike at a show, and then, uh, yeah. It right. shifts over time. Yeah. I you think see the, that a lot. The biggest problem with a show is brevity. It's brief. Yeah. It, you don't have a lot of time to play with any one thing, right? Well, and you probably feel rushed, people behind you waiting. Yeah, yeah. yeah so, so, yeah, it's an emotional roller coaster at a show. Well, that's very much it. You know, And it's sort of like anything. Um, you spend a little bit of time with something. It could be doing the thing you wanted to do, and so it gets you a little bit emotionally. And you really think, wow, this is, this is just the greatest ever. It's the best thing I've ever heard. And because of that... Uh, state you're in at the time it makes it harder for you to then hear something much better than that and you kind of always look back at that brief memory fondly and maybe you end up buying the thing and you spend a lot more time with it at home and oftentimes it doesn't live up to your expectations unfortunately that's common it works the same way with everything yeah that's you know, true cars clothes whatever right the th any of the things where you have to live with a little bit longer than the initial impressions period um, it's common, unfortunately, for some people. You could either fall in love with it or hate it. Could right. go either way. Well, I mean, plus you're no longer at a show when you're at home, right? It's in your yeah. system. You know, you could relax a little. So it's yeah. a whole different experience. There's definitely advantages to, to, for a long-term audition. Absolutely. Particularly if you're going to try to mesh it in with an existing system. Well, that's the thing. You're using you it know? with your gear. So that might work. It might not Which work. Which is another downfall of the show. You're you're forced to have use the gear that... Unless you bring your own portable, we've or, had a couple or of people. If you bring your headphones. We had a couple of people have like a a, a dolly with like 
30 pounds of gear on <laughs> occasionally yeah, yeah, yeah very I've, seen, rare. I've seen backpacks <laughs> which is filled with stuff yeah right, right. oh so, I, got, I got the adapter for you that. could kind of get away with that sometimes yeah. like if you're it's in some gear as long as it's light a lot of times the people at the booth are willing to let you do questionable things you hook up your own stuff and do all kinds of crazy adapters well, for, mo stuff. for most people you're you're gonna you're limited to what's at the booth or what's yep. at, in the room you know and it that can be a problem because uh you know if let's say i mean in both ways let's say you know you got a headphone that's on thirty thousand dollars worth of gear that you're never gonna buy right and it sounds unbelievable mm -hmm. now you you go home and say oh my god that headphone's over now you buy the headphone you get it plug it in your system right there's no unbelievable no, it's anymore. Underwhelming. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, you know, that was the system you were hearing, right? I mean, and by all means, the headphone has to convey it, but, you know, it may convey it to a higher level than you would think possible. Right. And the opposite's true. That's right. The same's true when you dumb down the system. Well, I think you know? every show, it's probably two, maybe three people ask. It's like, oh, can I try this on my phone? It's like, well, you could try it. <laughs> yeah, right. It'll work. Yeah. But, yeah. Oh, yeah, They're I always barely like, hear Yeah, it. it's not that great. Which brings us to another factor is because the volume level at a show, right. you know, unless you go in one of their quiet rooms, which is just half a dozen of them. Yeah. Even then they can be pretty loud. Right. You got people talking all the time. It's mm -hmm. tough. And, um, but the volume level is up there. It's, you know, it's probably 885 dB. It, it, it's relatively loud compared to home, which is most homes are probably around 55, 60 dB at night. Or nobody less. yelling or screaming, <laughs> yeah, you know, as long not. as you don't live in a big city. But that's a big difference. You're talking a 25 dB spread on noise. Uh, that's 25 dB you ain't hearing. <laughs> you know? yeah, that's yeah. a lot. Right. There could yeah. be a so lot going on it's there. It's drowning out all the subtleties in, the, in, the, in listening. And moreover, it could be that if you travel especially, you're fatigued. Or maybe you're in an unfamiliar experience. You're, you didn't sleep as well as you normally do, or you had different shampoo that morning, and now you feel slightly different. Like all these things. Oh well, yeah, the shampoos. Yeah. They're literally factors, though. Yeah. They really are. If you feel different, you're probably oh, yeah. gonna have a minor difference in your perceived experience. People and probably don't remember we did a video on that, right? Where we did. We yeah. talked about the, the varying types of shampoos or things you put in your hair could change yeah. the well, sound. Well, people joke about it, but <laughs> it's a real thing, and yeah. it's not significant. And maybe some people there are not gonna notice it, but when you're looking at high-end audio, especially. Oftentimes, the difference between some gear is very minor. It's tiny little nuance. So it's hard for you to be certain without a lot of experience what's causing this nuance. You, you wake up with like hotel bed uh, oh. hair. Yeah. <laughs> it's well, all sticking I mean, up. <laughs> as you know, <laughs> we like fits. pretty much run into this at every show. Because like <clears> you get there and you're tired from traveling or whatever. You set everything up and you're like, it works. And you're like, I'm not, I'm not even going to listen to this because you just don't even care at that point. <laughs> you know, after traveling and everything. Yeah. So Which we'll is an like, issue. We'll listen to it tomorrow. You're not in a mental state <laughs> yeah. to really appreciate what's going on, you know? And then, yeah, you combine that with you're not eating normally. Right. You're, nothing's normal. Sure. Right. You're it's outside. Late, you traveled you're all day. total. Yeah. yeah. You're just, you're totally just rocked the boat in terms of your life because mm -hmm. you're, you're not, you're not home. But this is one of those sort of worst case scenarios because there's no doubt that going to a show like this and actually taking the time to experience the things, there's a lot of value there. And, um, the issue is, unfortunately, it means you tend to have a lot of things going on that maybe you're not used to, maybe you're unfamiliar with. It's hard for you to really kind of work out what's happening or maybe the changes from your normal. Um, and you have a different baseline than normal for that period. So to be certain that the changes you're hearing are only because of the product or the gear or whatever, it is difficult. You might not have your same music. You might have various states and, and things like that going on that cause you to, to feel a little different. You might be hungry or thirsty. Mm. But what do you do about that, right? <laughs> well, that what one you can solve. Yeah. What are your yeah. alternative options? I think really the only thing you could do in this case to mitigate these issues is over time build experience by going to more shows and getting familiar with uh, a more nominal state that you're going to be in. Well, that's true. Kind of that's one way to do it. I mean, if something that you experience is repeatable, you know, through multiple days or Usually sessions – then usually you're, you know, you're, you're kind of at that point, you're honing in on the reality of it. You know, right. it, that, that's the way it's probably always going to be type thing yeah. to the most part, you know. And, I mean, that, that, that is the nice thing about shows is to me, a show is more about narrowing down yeah. your choices. I mean, some people make their choices there and that's fine, mm -hmm. you know, and I mean, it could go either way, but that's fine. I mean, a lot of people go there and, and they just, it reinforces what they already thought. They've read the reviews. They've read people's right. opinions. Yeah. Depends on the person. You know, and they're, they're ready for it. And they're just there to finalize. And they're just there and they're like, okay, this is doing what I thought it would do. And we're good. 
You know, they yeah. like the buttons on the amp. They like the look of it. They like mm-hmm. the feel of it. Whatever you're looking at, it couldn't doesn't have to be headphones. It could be anything there. The electronics, the tubes, the glow of the mm-hmm. tubes, mm-hmm. the weight of it, the size of it, the ability for it to throw to, to, to do raw power and volume. There's a lot of things you could gain out of a show. You know, well, there is another potential problem though, and that's like just fatigue in general from listening to. Like, because at the end of the show, and you already heard everything, by that point, you've heard so much that it's just like... You're, Burned you're, out. Yeah, you're like... Yeah. You start, it's a real you're thing. Like, yeah, yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, some people say take notes, which, yeah. you know, you, if you've never done this before, that might be a good idea. Yeah. I mean, if you're actually serious about it. It's hard to do, though. Because then you have a record of what you thought, because you could get lost. Yeah, but you still got to understand what you're talking about when you're writing down these notes. True. And so if you're not experienced, I think initially it's a bit much, but it's not a terrible idea. Still, though... When you go back, you read through your notes, it kind of helps you to relive the experience, but you don't necessarily always take account of all the factors that made you to believe, to, to feel or think this way. Yeah, you want to keep it brief. Since you don't have the product anymore, you can't try the experience again, it's hard for you to go back and re-verify later on. I could see taking notes like you want to keep it brief so you could draw little arrows like as you get more into the show, like say you're in day two. You get here and go. Oh, this isn't what I thought was it over here. And now it's I've changed my mind. Uh-huh. Well, that could be a mess. <laughs> you know, there was a guy in uh, Chicago last year, and he was taking notes, and he had like you know four or five bullet points for every headphone. Yeah. And then he was listening to twelve sixty six, and all he wrote down was wow. And yeah. That was it. He's like, I, I didn't write anything else. Yeah. That's what he said. Cool. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. See, that sums it up. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Brief notes. <laughs> it was a little brief. <laughs> to yeah. some extent, there is value in that, though. If you try to work your way up in what you believe to be your perception of performance at a show, I think that could work to your benefit. Because if you start from the top and work down, there could be trouble there because now you're always going to second guess. Well, did I like this because I heard it first and now I'm fatigued or these factors? Whereas if you kind of work your way up, it's kind of like, it's a, I think it's easier for you to really grasp the differences. The lower end stuff could help normalize your baseline. You work up from there. Or maybe if that's where you are, maybe yeah. you wrap back around, right? And you do everything twice yeah. if you have the time for that. Really depends on you as a person, though. That would require really two for. days for sure. It's a lot of time, though. That's yeah. the trouble. Yeah. A th- plan would probably be the best thing you do. Uh, the things you think you're probably going to like, start with that. Yeah. And go there first, early in the day, probably when it's like quieter, you know. This video was supposed sure to be starting. about the days after, though. Yeah, oh, we're right. talking. So we're, we're talking. Yeah. We're way off. The of morning this one. after. <laughs> yeah. 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 What happens after you go to the show? Well, yeah. it, you know, you got to start with you know that part. Well, right. first, <laughs> first is recoup. Yeah, right. Get recoup. back home. Get back to normal. Give it a day or two. Mull it over. Mm-hmm. Then maybe go back over your notes after the some time has lapsed. You know, what another thing besides mm-hmm. notes is just taking a photo. Like everyone's got a phone. If you take a photo of the system, like that way you see the yeah. electronics and every, you know what everything's there because right. notes don't necessarily tell you. You you, well, you, you can write it. You can note, do write you it can note the headphone or something, yeah. but then you'll forget what it was connected to. Right. It's yeah. like, well, the system matters too. So like, if you really want to recreate that, that's that's the direction you want to look at. But yeah, taking a photo of it and may, even like you could text yourself a picture with a note in it. Sure. If you think about it, you you know, take a, yeah, I mean, something that just, you know, you don't need paper is what we're saying. I do see need, people write down entire know. systems like, what app is that? What deck is that? Like, yeah. That's the harder way to go. You can just take a picture of it. Yeah. yeah. I think a picture would be easier and just, just so you have a record, oh, right. you know. And I mean, don't take, if you take a picture of everything, well, you're screwed. Wow. Yeah. You know, you're really taking a picture of stuff that you're really interested a lot in. Of pictures. You know? The summary is there's a lot of reasons why you might not necessarily like the product like you thought you did once you start living with it. And it's trouble because what do you do to fix it? Without the experience, without the knowledge and understanding, there's very little you could do, in my opinion. Yeah. Well, you look back to see what, you know, what, what was it that you liked to begin with? And it could be the electronics or yeah. it could be the headphones. It depends what you bought. If you bought an amp and you don't like it, well, now you got to be looking at what headphones you're listening to it on. And, you know, some things go together better than others. I always end up with a stack of business cards at the end and then, like when we get you back home and then it sparks up. Oh, yeah, I forgot I was even looking Look at, at the that. website. Yeah, right. I had to check it out. Some later. people carry a pen and just write on the back of the yeah, card. Yeah, writing something. on the card isn't bad if you got a little notes. You can have a pretty nice pen, though. Oh. Yeah, some of these some cards. Some business cards got You can't write yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's true. It's true. Yeah, you need yeah, one of those good pens. You need those that. ink gel pens. Mm-hmm. Gel yeah. ink. Yeah. Anyway. But yeah, uh, to help recall the show. Yeah, so I mean, you could see, you know, you could just in general, you could see. I guess you could see the pitfalls, especially if you do it. I, if you've never done a show before, don't worry about it. You know, just do the best you can. There's always another yeah. show. It's going to be overwhelming. Probably, yeah, so yeah. It don't is worry what about it, is. it. Yeah, don't be, you know, don't be super critical about it. You know, uh, life isn't 
isn't that short. Mm. <laughs> you can always redo this another way, you know, or, or try to you find another way to audition. You another show most likely, yeah. yeah. Right, so, you know, don't worry about it. But, but in the end, uh, these shows are great because you get to talk almost, almost all the time directly with some main people. And uh, you know, and they're knowledgeable, and they know they know why they did what they did. They know they know how they made the product. You know, they know all about it, and you know that may either fit your with your goals or not. I mean, you know, the the, the the reality of it. You know, why things are made the way they're made, and so on. It it also clears up a lot of misunderstandings people have with in products in general. You know, why is that volume knob so big on that amp, or so sure. little, or why why don't you have tone controls, or there's all kinds of questions I could see people having where you're talking right to a manufacturer. And they're going to tell you straight up why they made it the way they made it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it, it, that either turns you on or it turns you off. It depends on what you're looking for. Either you know? way, it provides value. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah it gets you closer good, to your goal of figuring stuff, out what you want. Good stuff that you can't just, you don't get from a website typically. Yeah. You know, so mm. it's, it's take so, that information yeah. in, suck it in. A yeah, ask the right questions. <laughs> and then so you can recall it later. Yeah. And compile it. Yeah. Yeah, right, exactly. They're there to help you. Yeah, and if there's something you're wondering, that's the time. Mm -hmm. Take that back with you, that knowledge, because you're not going to get it anywhere else. You if you call someone on the phone there, you're probably not going to get the same answers. It depends who you get on the well, phone. That's right. You know, but yeah, you might not get the same answer. I don't know. You might get the, exactly the same answer. It depends, depends who you, who you talk to. Yeah, yeah it depends who you talk to. But, but yeah, bottom line is that it's, it, it, it's, it's a good resource for people to learn more about the hobby in general. Even if you're not buying anything that right. day, you oh, know, yeah. you it's don't an need amazing resource to come back home with, you know. Talking with the people is the important thing. And I think if you talk with the people at the show and you actually describe, you know, hey, this is what I like, this is what I don't like, this is what I'm looking for, what I think is interesting about this product and stuff, a lot of times they'll have insight that will help you to minimize your risk and issues after you purchase a thing or you go home and you're wondering what should I purchase or should I do this or that. Your criteria will probably change. It makes change. it a little easier a lot of times. Now, all of a sudden you're looking at things you didn't even know you were supposed to look at, if you think about it. Yeah. You know, you got you got a whole new set of, subset of knowledge to go on and mm -hmm. and it, that helps to narrow it down. So again, even if you're not buying anything, it's great to just walk around and check it out So and, and take that knowledge with you and grow with it. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. You leapfrog off their experience to kind of it's good stuff. push yourself forward a little faster. Yeah, I mean, people have decades of experience and... Just to get a piece of that is amazing when you think about it. I mean, it's you're not going to get that anywhere else, you know. So cool stuff. Hopefully, you guys, uh, you know, get to see all the goodies. Try as much as you can. Mm. Hope you enjoyed the show. Yeah, I know. I know. We sure as hell in, are going to enjoy and enjoyed seeing everybody there. It's going to be a great show. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Thumbs us up. Take care. <laughs>